As far as the army were concerned, any escaping slaves who tried to come at, attach themselves to the army were just an encumbrance in general. Whereas for the Royal Navy, a, a lot of naval officers were very much in favor of, of abolition, abolition of slavery, and they were only too happy to actively help uh, slaves escape from their masters. There certainly are British officers and parliamentarians who are working towards the end of slavery, but there are people comfortably living in England who make all of their money off the backs of slaves working the sugar plantations. There were naval commanders who proposed to the British government that with enough black troops, the Americans could be scared, and also that they could actually incite revolt in Georgia and the Carolinas, uh, such that they would turn over into black republics like, like Haiti. But the British government uh, refused all such suggestions because of the inevitable damage there would be in the West Indies that would have gone up in flames if there'd been any such slave insurrection in the United States. Charge! Bayonet! Huzzah! It's now estimated that over 4,000 people, uh, refugee slaves, made their way to, uh, to British ships or to uh, posts that the British controlled for short periods of time. So many come aboard these, uh, these British warships that they actually form companies of colonial marines. There was a history of this same involvement in 1770s when they had the initial American Revolution. So this whole promise by the British of offering freedom to slaves is an old story uh, on the Chesapeake. It started with the Ethiopian troops that were enlisted during the War of 1776, and it carried forth. They proved to be, of course, very enthusiastic. They were very careful. They knew that if they were caught, they'd be executed, unlike British Marines, who would simply be treated as prisoners of war. But that doesn't mean that there aren't large numbers of free blacks who serve in the American military. Probably at one point, over 20% of the U.S. Navy, certainly those serving on the Great Lakes, are black troops. They were happy to be there fighting, on the understanding that afterwards they would be given land as free farmers. And I, I see that as a manifestation of their true Americanness. The United States Navy at that time had people of color. And I think one of the things that really set the groundwork for it was the international nature of the sea. As people have traversed the oceans of the world, they've always connected with the various coastlines, trying to gain local knowledge. These are things that I think that led the Navy to have a high percentage of people of color. The uh, U.S. government saw the, the blacks who left were taken, uh, and this uh, property was valuable. And at the end of the war, the United States government asked to be compensated because these are property, and the British don't pay. They don't give the slaves back, they don't pay up, they're already moving towards the abolition of slavery and they're not interested in the property rights of American planters. The Corps of Colonial Marines were taken to Trinidad where they were disbanded on the 20th of August 1816 in the south of the island in very rich soil. They were each given 16 acres of land. They formed a community, very independent-minded, uh, very well known for being quite different from everybody else with their strange American accent and so on. And the community still relishes its, its origins in America. They're known as the Americans. Some of the slaves that actually took up the offer of the British were promised freedom in Nova Scotia, Halifax, in North America. The record does show that there were some slaves that ended up in Nova Scotia, the dead of winter. I think it was a lot of hype with the promises, and uh, many of them found that things were not as rosy as the British pamphlets had indicated. What is not at all clear is what proportion of the slaves who were within reach of the British actually chose to escape. 
Now, they were told by their masters that if they went away with the British, they would simply be sold back into slavery in the West Indies, which would be a, a good deal worse than slavery in the Chesapeake. <laughs> 